Before we start into chapter two, this is a brief interlude that we'll take, and there are a few of these throughout the course of the semester, uh, where if you need a little bit of math review on some specific topics, uh, we'll have those. Uh, so this is math chapter A. This is between chapters one and two in your textbook, and this is about complex numbers. So the complex numbers show up a lot in the mathematics that we'll be doing, um, and m the complex numbers revolve around the imaginary number. And so this is the square root of negative 1, which we give the symbol i. And that means that i squared gives us a negative number. Uh, so some, it's something different than either a positive or a negative number. It's an imaginary number. Because if we square a negative number, we get a positive number. If we square a positive number, we get a positive number. And so complex numbers contain both uh, real, what's called, you know, real numbers are what we refer to as you know, sort of regular, right, positive or negative numbers. And so a complex number contains both real and imaginary parts. And so we often write, say, a complex number that we call z. We can write it with a real part x and an imaginary part y. So x is the real part, sort of our normal number, and y, i times y, is the imaginary part. Okay, and so for addition and subtraction, it's pretty straightforward. We just do the real parts and the imaginary parts separately if we're adding and subtracting complex numbers. One of the other um, common things that we'll do with complex numbers is, and this will show up a lot in this class, is what's known as the complex conjugate. So the complex conjugate of, co of a uh, complex number is written as the complex number star, so z star, is the complex conjugate of z, and say if z is x plus i y, you know up here, z star is equal to x plus whoop, not plus x minus i y. So the complex conjugate we take the comp the imaginary part and take the negative of it. So replace any i with a negative i, and that's how you create the complex conjugate, for, so pretty straightforward. Now what's useful about the complex conjugate and why it shows up fairly often is that it has a property if you multiply a complex number times its complex conjugate, let's see what we get. So if we have x plus iy times x minus iy, now this is, uh, we can just multiply this together like we normally would. Uh, so we'll get x squared plus xiy minus xiy uh, minus i squared y squared. Now if we simplify this, these two terms in the middle will cancel out. And so we'll get x squared minus negative 1 times y squared or x squared plus y squared. And the important point here is that this is always a real number. So our imaginary part always gets canceled out. Well, not canceled out, but multiplied out in a complex, if you take a complex number times its complex conjugate. And this is often, uh, what we can write this as is this. Uh, it looks like an absolute value squared, but it, in, it means the complex conjugate. Uh, one last useful thing with complex numbers that will show up is an equation known as Euler's formula. And this gives us a way to relate complex numbers and exponentials of complex numbers to trigonometric functions. And so the formula is e to the ix is equal to cosine x plus i sine x. And so we this is something that shows up in, uh, in the wave equations we'll talk about in chapter two, as well as the uh, quantum wave equations that we'll talk about in the rest of the class. Uh, and so being able to convert between trigonometric functions like sine and cosine and complex exponentials is, ends up being really useful, uh, especially when you have differential equations. And so uh, there's more detail in math chapter A, so if you need more more examples or practice. There are some problems you can do. I'm not going to assign them, 
uh, but look in math chapter A in your textbook or also the, the chapter uh, in the online textbook that I'll link to as well.